record button now. Um, please keep yourself on mute. Um, I went through that. Oh, at the end, there will be a poll open for about uh, five minutes at the end of the meeting. Please take the time to fill this out. This gives us a good idea of what subjects to cover in the future webinar series and so on. Um, at, after this is done, the recorded videos uh, should be visible through the Grand Lodge website. Um, it's on a YouTube, it's not searchable YouTube. So you'll have to use the link through the Grand, Grand Lodge website. Upcoming schedule. Uh, next week, we're going to have Caring for Masonic Treasures. And then starting uh, November 4th, we're going to have the Build a Better Beehive series. This is a series of uh, um, goes through the different positions and everything. So we're going to be starting off with Tyler, Marshall, Stewards, and then we're going to be taking uh, Thanksgiving break and continue on with building the Better Beehive afterwards. Um, another thing to note, the uh, Show and Tell Challenge is still up there. Um, it's a way to get lodges involved, um, uh, different, different methods, um, whether it's a video content, essay, poetry, art, etc. I answer in three questions. What is Freemasonry in Minnesota? What is your life and legacy say about Freemasonry? And how will you help others find their way to rewards of the craft? You can find this link on the Grand Lodge website as well as the e-mason that goes out. Now, without further ado, the Five Noble Ar Orders of Architecture, a Greek Odyssey by Worship of Brother, Brian Smith. Yay, big cheering and all these things, right? Let me see if I can find my presentation. There we go. Make it big. So this is, um, a presentation. It's got a little bit of a story behind it, of course, as all uh, all good presentations do. Uh, first, uh, it was, this was a family vacation that I took with my wife and two daughters. Oh, I think three summers ago now, and uh, so we took a we you know we kind of pulled the family and said, "Hey, where would you like to go?" And Greece was on the list, and I said, "Sure, Greece. would love to go to Greece." And I think they were all going there for I don't know the food, the dancing, the you know all the different nightlife in Athens. And I went there for two things. One was windsurfing, which I really enjoyed doing. And the other was the, the architecture, right? Just, just to, you know, to witness the Greek architecture in its uh, original or you know, its, its uh, decrepit yet still sometimes standing state is, was really incredible for me. So I was taking lots of pictures of, of uh, Greek columns and, uh, and the capitals and you know, going, ooh, look, Ionic, ooh, look at that Corinthian. And uh, the girls were just like, oh my goodness, you know, Let's let's get out to uh, let's go out and do some dancing. The other little bit is I put together this presentation uh, which, with worship brother Scott Corsi, and he was our marshal at the time. But uh, he did some of the bits uh, in here that I'm going to uh, read to you. So it's going to be it's going to be that exciting. I'm going to be reading to you. So here's our agenda. I'm going to review the five uh, noble orders of the architectures, and this is what I relied on uh, worship brother Scott Corsi to do. Uh, he's got all that memorized. I don't. And uh, just as a reminder, we've got the Tuscan, the Doric, the Ionic, the Corinthian, and the Composite. They're going to give you a tour of some of the Greek columns that we found uh, all over Greece, including the Parthenon, the Temple of Poseidon, the Oracle of Delphi, and the Temple of Olympian Zeus back in Athens. And then we're going to have a lightning round. And we're going to see if we can get everybody off a of mute. And we're just going to throw, we're going to throw up. The, the capitals, and you're just going to tell me that's, oh, that's Ionic, oh, that's Doric, oh, that's Corinthian. And uh, so we're going to have a great time with that. And we've got one in the end that hopefully I'll be able to stump you on. All right? So let's get started. So here's the five noble orders of the architecture. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to skip the Tuscan and the composite, because these are largely of, um, of Roman construction, and start with the Doric. And so I'm just going to read this. This is out of the Minnesota Masonic Manual. So nothing, uh, nothing in this non-tiled and kind of environment, nothing terrible here. Uh, the Doric, which is plain and natural, you can see there kind of a second from the left, is the most ancient. It was invented by the Greeks. His column is eight diameters high and has seldom any ornaments on its base or its capital, except moldings. 
though the frieze is distinguished by triglyphs and metatropes. And, uh, and, and triglyphs compose the, um, and triglyphs compose the ornaments of its frieze. The solid composite, the solid composition of this order gives it, gives it a preference in structures where strength and noble simplicity are chiefly required. And the Minnesota Masonic, Masonic Manual goes on. Then I'm gonna talk about the Ionic. The Ionic bears a kind of mean proportion between more solid and delicate orders. It is said to have been formed after the model of an agreeable young woman of an elegant shape dressed in her hair as a contrast to the Doric order, which is formed after a, that of a strong, robust man. And then finally, a little bit on the Corinthian. It's the richest of the five orders. It's deemed a masterpiece of art. And indeed, as you'll see in the photographs I've taken, it really is. Its column is 10 diameters high and its capital is adorned with two rows of leaves and eight volutes, which sustain the abacus. The frieze is ornamented with curious devices, uh, the cornice and the dentals with modillions. Modillion, this order is used in stately and superb structures. So just kind of a review of the of some of the uh, the orders, and of course the three that we're going to be focusing on here is the Doric, Ionic, and the Corinthian as we take a tour of ancient Greece. So we'll start with the Parthenon in in Athens, and of course the Acropolis just means Greek for a tall city, so it's kind of the, one of the tallest places in Athens. And I'll take you on a Google Earth tour after we're done here with the presentation to kind of give you a visual idea of where you are in relationship to all the different places. So this is a former temple of the Athenian Acropolis. Uh, and it was dedicated to their patron goddess of Athena. Construction began in uh, 477 BC. This was after the uh, Battle of Marathon, which was 4, 490 BC, where the, you know, the, it was the um, Athenians and another city-state that came to their aid. Sparta was busy. Uh, they had their uh, a celebration, a different celebration. So the Spartans never came. But for this battle, it was the um, Athenians, largely the Athenians, about 10,000 of them, defeated 20, 25,000 Persians that had landed, landed over on the east side of the peninsula and were marching um, through the, through the uh, marathon plains. So the construction was kind of a monument of celebrating this um, Hellenic, this uh, Greek victory over these Persian invaders. And as you can see here, generally considered the zenith of the Doric order. So you can see the, the strong lines of the, of the Doric here, and then these tall, tall stately um, uh, columns. Um, this shot was taken you know, um, towards the end of the day. So we're kind of looking towards the, uh, the west. You can see the, uh, the sun behind there. What is just, I think, incredible about this, this uh, photograph is uh, you can see that all these columns are in, um, in the shade, right? So it's, just, it's backlit. But you notice the three columns, if I get my cursor going here, these three columns that are still standing in the middle, they are just a glow. And why? Because they would also be in the shade. It's the reflection off of this white marble is reflecting and illuminating these columns. Can you imagine the ancient Greeks upon coming up to this great uh, holy site and in not having, of course, you know, any kind of electricity or any kind of lighting other than maybe just some... Uh, you know, gas lamps and oil lamps, but to have some of the illumination of the sun coming into these uh, these uh, buildings and to have this glow it would certainly seem uh, stately and godly, just incredible. So the next is the Temple of Poseidon. Uh, it's uh, kind of southeast of Athens in the Cape uh, So Union. And this was constructed in the 440, uh, 444 to 440 BC. So about 50 years after the Battle of Marathon. And um, it, was, uh, also, it was done by a, a statesman who also was rebuilding the Parthenon, the Parthenon in Athens. Uh, with most Greek, all Greek temples, it was a rectangular in shape. Um, and another, the number of original columns and the outer colonnade is 34. There's 15 of these columns still standing today with addition of one out of the four columns of the inner nanos. And these columns, as you'll see, are also of the Doric order. White marble poured locally, and uh, they were 20 feet high. So it's a very impressive uh, building. And at one end of facing the entrance, there was a, an image of the colossal uh, of Poseidon, 
six meters, 20 feet tall, um, uh, bronze statue of Poseidon. Again, must have been just a spectacular sight. So there it is, a little bit more, uh, more detail. You can see a lot more weathered than a lot of the Athenian um, um, uh, work. But also, too, you know, one of the things that is being done is these buildings are always being restored. And so I think the Temple of Poseidon here is a little bit, this is more of the original, you know, kind of stolen, the original aging and weathering and all that. Some of the pieces in the Parthenon and, and some of the other buildings around Athens and Greece are being restored. And they are doing good work with the restoration. And, and they'll have the same kind of marble, but it'll be a much more modern or recent. So you see the difference in colors. This, it doesn't look like much at all was repaired other than maybe you know, some of these individual pieces, but they may have restacked them at some point in time. So if we go inland now, about 130 miles northwest of Athens, we have the Oracle of Delphi. And this is a beautiful, huge, um, almost like a city kind of built into a mountainside. And this is where the, the, the Oracle of Delphi uh, would, would be and would give their, um, well, sometimes it was women, sometimes it was men, over hundreds of years, they would give their prophecies. And there was, uh, there was always rumors about where or how these prophecies came to be, but there's uh, you know, one of the things that you'll read about is that they were gases yeah, emanating from the cracks and the Oracle was indeed in, you know, breathing in these gases and they, they might've been a little bit uh, hallucinogenic or at least caused some euph euphoria. And so these were these, um, these prophecies came from. So the earliest account is back um, around again, the Battle of Marathon time. I'm sorry, about 100 years older than the Battle of Marathon. And, uh, and it's really a mixture of lots of different kinds of orders because it's construction was over many, many, many centuries. Um, so you've lots of different um, um, individuals, authors, right, who had mentioned the Oracle uh, over different years and all that. So it really was you know, something that was a kind of thing where if you really wanted to know, you know the prophecy, you would travel you know, 130 miles through the mountains from Athens, wherever you were traveling, to come. And it was an, an indeed an entire megatropolis of activities. You know, there's banks, and they were because you know, they, they had to draw out your money to be able to, um, you know, to uh, grease the palms of the people who were doing, uh, doing the work. But also, too, there were hotels to stay in. There were you know, places to bathe. There was an amphitheater for plays and all sorts of things. So it really was a, a huge community uh, for life, for Greek life in this time. And there's just kind of up from the hill, looking down, you can see this beautiful rugged valley. Uh, there's just a portion of the, really the this, this city that's been built into the side of the mountain there. And there's a, uh, a capital um, yeah, at the Orphical that's a, a, a uh, Ionic uh, capital there, but it's just a mix of all sorts of other things that you, all sorts of different capitals that you can see that. That one there, to me, kind of looks like it was just lifted up and you know, placed on the pedestal so the tourists could look at it. But uh, definitely the, um, the Oracle Delphi is in a more um, decrepit shape. So it, as my daughters and wife would say, oh, what are we doing? We're looking at another pile of rocks. And I go, but these are really cool pile of rocks. But anyway, in some of the different piles of rocks, they're a little bit more piled than building. Or I mean, they look, some of them look more like a pile of rocks. Some of them look more like buildings. And so here, this definitely was more of a pile of rocks. Back to Athens, we got the Temple of Olympian Zeus, um, and just uh, probably a little bit uh, east, you know, within walking distance of the Acropolis. Uh, everything that you wanted to see in Athens is all centrally located, uh, because Athens was not that big, you know, when all these things were created. Now it's just a huge megatropolis. So this was dedicated to the Olympian Zeus. And in fact, the original uh, modern Olympian Olympic Stadium is pretty close to this Temple of Olympian Zeus. It's like, if I'm thinking, it's kind of further to the east, northeast, uh, you know, maybe about a 10 minute walk. Uh, if it's 95 degrees, maybe it'll take you 15 minutes because it's, it gets really hot there. So this was constructed beginning in the sixth century BC. Um, it was not completed until the Roman Emperor Hadrian uh, in the second century AD. So some 638 years after the construction had begun. So uh, just a really uh, very ambitious project. And of course they built for a bit and then they ran out of money and they built for a bit and then somebody invaded and they 
built for a bit and then storms would knock it down and then they built for a bit. And finally, uh, Hadrian, which really loved Athens and um, they had a lot of personal investment and donated a lot of uh, things to Athens, uh, was able to get it uh, completed. So it had been redesigned and originally um, the order was uh, Doric and then they changed that to Corinthian. So marking this is the first time that this order, the Corinthian order had been used for the exterior of a major temple. You can see just the, the imposing site here. You can see this is my daughter, right? Kind of standing in front of it. And just the imposing site of this, even compared to like the, the, uh, the Parthenon or even the, the 20 foot tall uh, Zeus's, um, Poseidon's temple. Zeus's temple here is just incredible. And the detail in the Corinthian capitals here is just very impressive. So just wonderful. Um, it's a beautiful thing to see and you can get real close and personal with it. It's one of the, one of the great wonders of, the, of Athens. All right, you guys ready for a lightning round? So Michael, can we take them off mute or maybe if everybody had like a sign they could you know, throw up like Doric or Ionic or Corinthian? Um, let's see here. Well, I think I, everybody would have to unmute themselves on here. Now, if you can find the, uh, the mute and unmute, go for it. There we go. All right, people are getting unmuted. We, we may have a little bit of feedback, but who cares? Let's just push all through it. Ready for the lightning round? Okay, here we go. So this is the temple of, and I can't pronounce this. Uh, does anybody know how to pronounce it? Hephaestus. Hephaestus. Yep. This is in the ancient Agora. There's two Agoras, two marketplaces. There's the ancient one, which is Greek-based. The other is the more modern or Roman one. Uh, but this temple is just beautiful. Oh, okay. um, great position. What's the order? Doric. 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 Excellent. Excellent. He was a uh, crippled blacksmith. That's right. This is uh, like one of the um, of the of the masons of the blacksmiths. The uh, temple, you know, for the the patron saint, as it were, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. This is also in the ancient Agora. This is in the museum that's right adjacent to the ancient Agora in Athens. What's the order? Ionic. Ionic. Ionic it is. And take a look at this. This is just off to the side. Um, if you take the stairway, it's, it's like a stairway goes around it. Most of everybody's taking the elevator and they never even see this, but look at it. You can see the color <laughs> is still on there. That's the original color. Uh, that they found on it. A lot of these were ornately done with gold leaf and, and other different colors and paintings and all that. But this one, you can actually see the color. And it just was, wow. And most, most of the tourists would just walk right by it and not see it. But that, that was really cool. That was, that was in a museum right next to the ancient Agora. All right. This is also now in the Roman Agora. And these are largely... Corinthian. Corinthian, I would say, yeah, maybe composite, right? I, I don't think I'm smart enough to tell the difference, but largely Corinthian and again, just, you know, hey, we had a whole bunch of them laying around and, you know, we'll just throw them on top of these concrete blocks and um, people could just walk by them. So yeah, I just, I always thought, hey, wouldn't it be cool just to have like a little wheelbarrow and a suitcase and take one of these home, right? They wouldn't. <laughs> Which by the way, I... that's, if you go to the British Museum, in, uh, in London, um, uh, they're, uh, they've got all sorts of uh, Greek stuff there because that's exactly what the British did. They were walking around and they said, hey, this is pretty cool. Let's cut that out of the, you know, out of here and we'll just ship it back and, uh, and nobody be mad at us. <laughs> okay. That's true. So just southeast, uh, a good distance or so, you know, maybe about a 30 minute walk of the, of the Acropolis is the first cemetery. This is the original cemetery of Athens. And so I walked around here and it's just a beautiful, wonderful place just for a kind of story. You see lots of different kinds of architecture. And, um, and of course, here is the Ionic. Ionic. Ionic, very good. And also too, in the first cemetery of Athens, these are Corinthian. Very good, you guys, you guys are good here. All right. <laughs> So this is the Erechtheion, I think that's pronounced, Erechtheion, oh, Erechtheion. 
erechtheion. That sounds pretty good. Uh, also in the Acropolis, this is on the Acropolis also, uh, right next to the Parthenon. And um, so there is, this is obviously... Ionic. Ionic, but look at the detail that they have even associated with Ionic and all that. And then uh, this is the Porch of the Maidens. And so not all you know, of the columns have to be um, straight and narrow. Some of them can be wonderfully shaped. All right, back to the Oracle of Delphi. Again, they're just walking along and they have these, these capitals. They're just stuffed. You can see they're kind of just stuffed in the back corner here. Like, yeah, we don't quite know what to do with them. But we have... Ionic. Ionic, exactly. Ionic. Based upon the lovely maiden's hair. Also, Oracle of Delphi, this is, a, I think, a, they can see here the more modern pieces that they've uh, plugged in, but some of the original pieces there too. And this is a, a bank, I believe, like a, a vault, uh, a bank. And uh, so what order is that? Right. Right. Excellent. And then two here is also at the Oracle of Delphi. Look at the stones that were just laid as part of this wall. And I thought of the perfect Ashler. And you know, maybe you guys are a perfect Ashler. I'm not, I know that. But I think this is more the kind of perfect Ashler that I'm trying to be not be perfectly rectangular, right? Because that's kind of square, but to be a perfect ashlar and to fit as beautiful as this into the surrounding environments, into the surrounding people, into the surrounding society, into the surrounding government. Into, you know, it's just a, a beautiful, wonderful uh, building. And I, I mean, I, I thought, saw this and I fell in love with it. And of course, my girls were going, it's supper time, let's get out of here. Okay. <laughs> And also too, right, not all columns need to be, you know, yeah. kind of the traditional that we see in all this. A lot of different kinds of uh, shapes and um, styles. So you can see some of the other bits and pieces, you know, kind of back here too of the, uh, of the Oracle of Delphi. And again, built over many hundreds of years. Is that in the, is that in the style of Willy Wonka? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, uh, I, I'm, I, was, I should have looked it up before, but this, this column, uh, I think the Turks stole this. And so you can actually, if you go to Istanbul, you see this, uh, uh, the sister of this column or the Greeks stole it from the Turks or something. But there is a, a history behind that column. But really, yeah, it's indeed, um, I don't know what it's what it was meant to represent. Are Maybe these, they... uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, I apologize. I thought no, you go were ahead, Tim. Uh, are these uh, stacked? Uh, these columns or are they uh, from ground uh, to 20 foot high all one piece because these look like they're stacked most all of them that i saw are stacked right so they they were constructed in these segments quarried as it were in these segments and then carved you know to the masons you know to the uh, master yes. masons uh, orders and decrees and then stacked and in fact That's not amazing. go ahead please tim that's amazing if you think yeah. about it for, for level, just level yeah. everything. Yeah, just level. And they, they, I don't think I have any photographs of them, but you often see in the middle, they are hollow. And so they would allow to have like wood or some other kinds of support in there to kind of keep them from sliding and slipping and you know, falling off, especially uh, considering the, um, the temple of Olympian Zeus in Athens I think there was a, a windstorm, I forget what the year was, like 18 something, 1838, you know, let's say early 1800s, there was a windstorm and it knocked down a few of the columns. And, did, they uh, use the, did they use those uh, uh, holes to possibly to lift them in place? Yeah, it could be did lift. You know or how they, they got them in place? Was it a, yeah, lift or to keep them, keep them from sliding around. Of course, after you got the weight and then the, you know, the rooftops and everything else on them, they would pretty much stay there. Oh. So this is Hadrian's Arch. This is right next to the Temple of Olympian Zeus. You can see even through Hadrian's Arch there. This is the Acropolis there. So again, just about a 10 minute walk from, from the Acropolis. What's the order? Corinthian. Fantastic. Back to the first cemetery of Athens. Look at that. 
looked very interesting. So as, you know, as a Mason, you travel around, you see a lot of interesting symbols. And then here is one at the Temple of Poseidon. Um, the date looked to be about 1902, as far as I could tell there. And it looks like a, a, a hammer and a compass. And not quite Masonic, but I just thought it was kind of interesting. You know, maybe the, the individual was a, uh, um, you know, a, a stone mason or, or something, but uh, it was just a, an interesting, hmm. uh, maybe graffiti on one of the stones that was near the Temple of Poseidon. Okay, this one, identify this historically important edifice from its noble order. Anybody? Any guesses? Is that the Tuscan? Well, I'm looking for the building that this oh. uh, that oh. this uh, uh, this column supports. But yeah, it's kind of a uh, capital building. No, it's not. It's not any capital building, uh, either federal or state. Hmm. You you won't get it. You won't get it. Temple on the Mount there. Yeah, no, no, you won't get it because uh, you're not from but, Rochester, Minnesota. Uh, <laughs> that's not right, right across from Rochester Lodge number 21, we got Beatles owned by a, a fellow brother. And that's where we go for a little bit of libation after our meetings. And uh, as you can see over here, that's the, uh, the, the noble order that supports Beatles in Rochester, Minnesota. Okay. Very cool. Do you have any, uh, how many questions? I'm going to fire up uh, the Google Earth and give you a little kind of visual tour of, uh, of where these different things are in relation to, in relationship to each other. But if you've got questions, either type them into the chat, I won't be able to see them, or um, just ask them out outright. If you don't have questions, quick question for you, brother. Back, go on mute. I have a quick yes. question for you, brother. Uh, do you have any images at Delphi of, of the location where the oracle would actually reside while giving uh, the prophecies? No. Is that location I known? I, th I believe it is. Um, we got there late um, in the afternoon, and the tours were already done. We were able to go in, but the tours were already done for the day, so we did not have the, uh, the opportunity to really learn about, you know, yeah, no, we didn't have the, we, I might have even walked right by it and not know it. Sure, not. understood. Thank you, brother. Yep. All, all the more reason, all the more reason to get back over there and take a tour. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, we went, uh, yeah, we, we were driving a long, <laughs> a long time that day. Um, so there's a lot of, a lot of kilometers on the car. So here's kind of an overview of, uh, of Greece and the, let's, I kind of zoom into the uh, Acropolis. Stop right here. And uh, just everything is just right around this area. So that's the whole Acropolis. That's the Parthenon, um, the museum right there, the Greek museum and all that. So a lot of the, they've moved a lot of the uh, original pieces into the museum and now it's protected and climate controlled. And then they've made exact copies of them and they put them back up in, you know, in on site in Suchu. And if it's so a, did they cut that out of the mountain? This, this is actually, you know, this was a, uh, a mountain that was there. And then they, they brought up all this marble was actually mined and quarried and brought other places. Now this amphitheater is like this, this is carved out of the side of the mountain and then yeah. lined with marble. Um, in fact, we saw a play here. Um, Jesus. Uh, yeah, we were seated about right here where my hand is, and it's perfect acoustics. Uh, the play, believe it or not, uh, was in Greek, which makes sense because we're in Greece. And they had, right above the stage, they had a place where you could tell they were going to project um, subtitles. And so we thought, great, All right? Play is in Greek, fine. It was, um, well, I forget the name of the play. And it's like, great. And so then we'll just, what, we'll read the subtitles. No problem. Well, the play started and the subtitles were in Greek. <laughs> but we stayed for the entire play. Uh, it, was, it was, you know, because it plays are a lot more emotion than it is speaking and all that. And just the acoustics 
in this place was just fantastic. So that's where the, yeah, kind of in relationship, of course, Athens is just this huge place. Here is the temple of Olympian Zeus. Again, about a 15 minute walk straight shot. And I think this is the, uh, the capital that fell over like in the 1800s. Um, there's even more, you know, ruins of the, the whole temple, you know, things that are around there. Archaeologists are in here. They don't let tourists into there. And then the Hadrian's Arch is right there. So you can see the, uh, let's see here, uh, yeah, Temple of Olympian Zeus. Get a better perspective of that in relationship to the Acropolis up there, Hadrian's Arch right there. You can see, uh, you know, this, these major roads that are kind of ringing everything, right? So you're you take your life into your own hands if you want to you know, get anywhere around Athens because the, the traffic is crazy. And then just even right next door, right, this is the original modern Olympic stadium. Now, well, here's another little uh, tourist hint for you. Um, you, can, you can walk up to here, right up to the entrance here, and you can take pictures and you kind of look in and you, and you say, oh, that's interesting. Or you can pay some money and go in and walk around. Okay, well, there's a better way. You notice way in the back here, the ground is, this is actually was dug out and the ground is all the way around there. If you get up to the street right here, there's stairways that go up and you can see these little entrances here and he, like here and here. Uh, you can just walk in for free. There's no, no, nobody taking any money and you can walk around that way. So that's how we got in We're through these little gates that are in the back. So a little bit of a, you know, a tourist uh, uh, thing for you there. And then, um, so that's the Acropolis. And then we're going to go to the Temple of Poseidon here, which is down to the southeast. <coughs> Excuse me. So Athens is off in the distance. And this is a good hour drive, maybe a little bit more. But look at this just impressive uh, uh, building that's right on top of this peninsula here. It's just incredible because you look from there and it's just all the way around the views. And can you imagine being a sailor and coming in? Because you know, this is the rest of the, uh, uh, the, the sea out there. Can you imagine being a sailor coming in and then seeing this just super impressive uh, edifice on this peninsula? Has the sea gone down since? Um, would it be closer to it? Um, no, I don't think the sea has changed all that much since these times. Because this is a this is a good, you know, like here, I can, Mr. Google Earth. So this is two hundred and fifty feet above sea level, and two hundred and fifty feet, the oceans haven't changed that much. You know, there's tides, but. Um, yeah, 250 feet. It's, it was built on top of there on purpose. And then here, you know, if you're going back, let me just get back to north, kind of give you a little bit better reference. So here is then Athens. There's a mountain range here in this Temple of Poseidon. And then the uh, plains of Marathon are actually about in this area right here. So the Persians actually landed here and then they were attacking this way and uh, the, um, the Athenians and another, uh, another city state defeated them. And then that the marathon was, I forget the guy's name, the, the Greek guy that ran you know, from here all the way to Athens and uh, announced right, that we had victory. We, we, you know, he basically announced we won and then died on the spot. And of course, the modern day uh, marathon is based upon you know, the estimate of that distance. And then the Temple of Apollo Delphi is way over here. So it's kind of inland a bit. So any other questions or um, anything else? Wonderful presentation. Thank you, brother. Yeah. It was, no, uh, it was a hardship, you know, putting it all together for you guys. It, it really was Amazing. terrible. But I was thinking of you. I was thinking of you. You, you took the sacrifice. <laughs> 
All right, I've uh, launched the poll. Uh, please take time to fill that out. We can still ask questions if we have any. Um, feel free. So what's your next destination? Uh, have you thought about any other places other than Greece now that you've uh, experienced that? Well, we had some uh, some trips planned, and uh, but then this whole COVID-19 kind of thing happened and all that. So yeah, we've been thinking of... Um, New Zealand, um, getting back to Australia, and uh, and then possibly getting back to Hawaii, uh, kind of some of the next next things. Oh, Portugal! We've been talking about Portugal. I've never been to Portugal, and uh, so to get there. New Zealand. Yeah, New yeah. Zealand. See some of the. Uh, uh, Lord of the Ring, you know, places that'd be that'd be why I would go. Oh, definitely. I, I think that'd be that's got to be a big draw for them. Yeah. Movies. Yeah. Hopefully, we can get back to traveling here pretty soon. Definitely. Anybody got any other questions? Thank you, Workful Brother, for your uh, for your presentation. Excellent presentation. A pleasure. Well, thanks for.